Here is a depiction <coughs> of maturity transformation, but now I make a distinction. I introduce it now, because we'll talk about it again in Module 4. I make here I make a distinction between maturity transformation that is contractual and maturity transformation that is behavioral. Now, this is something to introduce now, but we'll talk about it again, as I said, in, mature, in Module 4 on liquidity risk. Not all loans and deposits stay on the balance sheet for their contractual maturity. For example, you might take out a mortgage to buy a house with a contractual maturity of 25 years, but five years down the line, you sell the house and that, mature, that mortgage repays. So that one had a behavioral life of five years as opposed to its contractual life of 25 years. Conversely, you may place money on deposit in a call deposit at a bank, which has a, a contractual maturity of one day, but you may leave the funding there for the next 10 years, simply adding to it as you save more money. That one has a contractual tenor that is very short, but a behavioral tenor that is a lot longer. So we make this distinction um, and we understand the difference between them because in due course, when we look at risk management of the balance sheet, this difference between contractual and behavioral tenor will impact the way we manage the balance sheet for liquidity risk. Okay? If I've got a book, a, a book, a balance sheet that is funded by wholly uh, non interest bearing liabilities and, and, and instant access uh, deposit accounts, and I'm using it to fund mortgages. Contractually, I've got a very large gap. But behaviorally, that gap could be a lot less. Okay, so we want to be aware of this. There's a lot of analytics and statistics and uh, data crunching that is done to understand the behavioral tenor of customer loans and deposits as part of our balance sheet risk management process.